Hey guys, welcome back to the podcast. We are back with Coach. Today we're going to go over big game surf fishing, especially here in Southern California. That means sharks, we got mud marlins, which you're going to find out what that is in a second, and some other noteworthy fish that if you catch it, you're going to be known across the forums and whatnot because they're so elusive. So Coach, welcome back to the show. My pleasure, man. Awesome. So shark going for sharks, you know, can be a little bit controversial. Some people don't like when people go after them, but you know, it's totally legal here. Uh, do you want to give a little bit of a breakdown? I know we've caught a, a cool shark in the past. That's a pretty cool story. Do you want to kind of go over the ins and outs of what it takes to, to bring in a sizable shark here? Sure. Well, I mean, you're talking about a bite leader, a shock leader, and then your main line. So no matter what you're doing, um, as I recall, don't quote me on this. We had a short bite leader, a fairly decent shock leader, and then your main line for your uh, state record. Oh, stupid. Um, <laughs> you know, I'm just messing with you, John. I know. It's sad. But, uh, Technically, it was a state record. <laughs> it's all good. It's all good. It There's was bigger ones a out state there. record, but come on now. It doesn't come matter. On, it's not even on. big compared to what other people catch. Records are for... You just want them to be able to say you got them, but it doesn't matter. <laughs> yes, indeed. So you did catch a state record soup in on camera, actually, which was hilarious. That is true. But, I mean, this is what I would say to anybody that's out there chasing sharks or rays. I mean, even yellow tail or white sea bass. I mean, come on. If you hook a fish and the hook pops out and it digs into the gills, by all means, keep the fish and make sure you hang it up. Make sure you girdle the tail and head. Make sure that everything is cut up nice so that you can make the best use of the fish. There's no reason to toss a heavily bleeding shark back in the water. There's really no reason for it, I promise. There's plenty of sharks here, whether it's makos or soup fins or thrashers or leopards. We got plenty of sharks. Plenty of sharks here in SoCal. I get it if you're in somewhere where the the bull shark is threatened or if the the uh, greater hammerhead is an endangered species. I get it. I get it totally. But if you hook a fish, whether it's a shark or not, and it's bleeding super hard, like the one that John and I caught a year or two ago, by all means, harvest the fish. So cut through the gills girdle the tail, bleed them out in the salt water, and leave them up to hang for another couple of hours. It's a lot of work, I promise, but it's worth it. Yeah, I would say, you know, I I wasn't one to to want to eat shark too, too much, even though I found out that a lot of the fish tacos that you eat in Baja are usually shark bycatch anyways, and they're super delicious. And the shark that we did eat was one of the best tasting things I've ever had. I think the fact that most people think it's nasty to eat is because the processing which is super laborious isn't something that most people know about or do it right you know most people just cut it up soak it in milk and think that's going to take care of you know the ammonia taste and whatnot but like doing a full legit process and respecting the animal i mean that's hours you know and that's usually late at night as well so just something to note um i know that when it comes to shock leader and bite leader I think you said that you've used like weed whacker line for bite leader, depending on the shark or wired line. And then that goes up depending to a certain knot with a shock leader. Do you want to kind of go through the standard protocol? Is it like what size circle hook to then like what knot do you use with, do you usually you crimp it? And then do you also crimp the shock leader to your, your bite leader? How, what's that stack? Well, I mean, person, every shark fisherman has preference. I'm not trying to step on anybody's toes. My personal favorite is you run a seven-knot circle, and I like the uh, Eagle Claw ocean circles. So you got a seven-knot circle hook with a big chunk of bait on it. Make sure that your point is exposed. And then from there, you either run it to... I personally prefer a section of seven or eight foot weed whip line crimped off. And I really do prefer a steel breakaway on that. So you have your bite leader 
and then the steel breakaway. Just a piece of uh, iron or cast iron, um, a rebar or whatever, with eight inches of line, preferably like 20 to 40 pound test in between it and your main rig. So that when the shark hits, it butts off. Those are my preferences. I mean, obviously, it'll all depend on what kind of shark you're dealing with. If you're dealing with 10-foot bull shark, it's a whole different thing to be with a 6-foot soup fin. So, I mean, you got to take a few factors into account. But, yeah, I try to keep my rig simple. I try to crimp where I can. I try to use a uh, double palomar for the uh, braid to whatever section, whether it's leader, by leader, rub leader. I try to keep things as simple as possible. And then once you get lucky, when you actually, before we bring in the fish, I mean, are there things that you have to consider in terms of like your drag, tail whip, things like that that aren't mostly common things that to practice? Like what, what are you thinking when you, once you hook it? Hook set. Oh, tail whip? What do you know about that? I'm just messing with you, John. Uh, the first suit. You got tail whip. <laughs> you got tail whip bad on that first uh, spinning setup. I'm just glad your uh, mono on that conventional held up. But so, so basically, it's like you're trying to outpace the shark. So if you're worried about six foot sharks, you better have a seven or eight foot rub leader. It's not brain surgery. There's no watch building to it. It's all about you managing the shark, your bait, your chum, and getting on. Not brain surgery. No, that makes sense. And then once you bring that shark in, what do you like to do um, to get the hook out? Or do you leave the hook in and it rusts out? What's the common practice? So there's a couple of uh, caveats to this. If you want to just cut your hook, Use bronze hook. It's real simple. You just cut the hook where it enters the shark's, the corner of the shark's mouth. You cut it off, and it work its way through and fall out into the ocean and rust away. However, if you're really gung ho and you really want to hang your shark, don't do all that if the shark is bleeding. So if you're targeting sharks, by all means, please be willing to harvest the shark. It's not brain surgery or watch building. You just do what you can. Yeah, that's a good point. It's a very good point. And then outside of sharks, I know if you really want to get a workout in, uh, the mud marlins are pretty fun to catch. What are your thoughts on those? So mud marlin, um, those big girls, nothing opposed to the big girls. I love me some big girls. They're in the back of the bays, whether San Diego, Mission, Newport, Alamitos, et cetera. Those big, those big bat rays, aka mud marlin, are going to be way back in the back bays, vacuuming up uh, clams, razor clams, whatever shellfish they can find. You get on one of those, you can be the fight of your life for sure. I mean, what's the biggest mud marlin that you've heard recently? Are we talking like 200 pounds over that? The biggest I've heard lately is probably 140 to 160. Hmm. That's my man Bear on SD Fish. Just a couple of years ago, we were getting mud marlin to 210, 230. It's a whole different level of of, uh, bat ray happiness and delivery but well it's funny i was it all depends i was diving the other day and i spooked one in probably six feet of water when i was spearfishing i have not seen something that big (laughs) i was like what is that thing moving and it just whoom and it was the biggest cloud of dust i've seen i was like wow you're a you're a tank uh what gear should we be using for those things I mean, it really depends on preference, again, as usual, but anything in the conventional glass, like uh, 40 to 60 pounds, that will be the key. Something to get some big torque on it. And then a very stiff rod. Torque, stiffness, 
you're talking about pinning it to the railway and tuna. So you're talking about getting everything lined up and increasing your mechanical advantage. Are you using a weight belt or a, a rod belt or no? Probably not. Hey, just one more thing before you go. Would you find it helpful to get a few fishing tips and tricks sent straight to your inbox? Well, if so, head over to castandspear.com forward slash join and sign up for our weekly newsletter. Tight lines.